Let's come up with a formula for finding the volume of rectangular prisms. First, let's make sure you remember what rectangular prisms are. Which of these solids is a rectangular prism? To review, click down here instead. Exactly right. This solid is a rectangular prism. So let's come up with a formula for its volume. Now finding the volumes of rectangular prisms is a similar process to finding the areas of rectangles. Take this rectangle here, for example. Suppose its base has length 4 and its height has length 2. What's the area of this rectangle? If you're not sure, click down here to review. Nicely done. The area of a shape is the number of unit squares that fit inside it. And a unit square, like this one over here, is a square with side length 1. This rectangle is 2 by 4, so there are 2 times 4, or 8, total unit squares here, which means the area of this rectangle is 8. Next, let's look at a rectangular prism. Now, the volume of a solid is the number of unit cubes that fit inside. And here's an example of a unit cube. It's a cube whose side length is 1. So for this rectangular prism, with length 4 and width 2, what's the volume? In other words, how many unit cubes does it contain? Don't worry, this is not a trick question. Exactly, there are 8 unit cubes here, so the volume of this prism is 8. Next, let's look at a prism that's a little taller. So just like our prism from before, this prism has a length of 4 and a width of 2. But now this prism also has a height of 3, meaning it's made up of 3 layers of unit cubes stacked on top of each other. So what's the volume of this prism? How many unit cubes does it have? Very well done. Each layer of this prism, like this top layer here, has a volume of 4 times 2, or 8, cubic units. And there are also three total layers here. So the total number of unit cubes is 4 times 2 times 3. So the volume of this prism is 24. Now take a look at this rectangular prism here. Its base has a length of 3 and a width of 4. And the height of this prism is 5. So what's the volume of this prism? Great work! Now there are a few different ways you could have found the volume of this prism. One way is to see that there are three layers in this direction. Each layer has 5 times 4 unit cubes, and we can multiply that by the three layers. Another way to find the volume of this prism is to see that there are five layers in this direction. Each layer has 3 times 4 unit cubes, and we can multiply that by the five layers. And yet another way to find the volume is to count the four layers in this direction. Each layer has 5 times 3 unit cubes, and we can multiply that by the four layers. Now all of these expressions give you the same volume. It's 60. So as you can see, multiplying the three dimensions of a rectangular prism, length, width, and height, gives you the volume of the prism. So for this prism, the volume is 3 times 4 times 5. Next, take a look at this rectangular prism over here. Let's say its height is A, its length is B, and its width, or depth, is C. What's the volume of this prism in terms of A, B, and C? Excellent! So to find the volume of any rectangular prism, you can multiply the lengths of its three dimensions. Next, let's take a look at a cube which is a rectangular prism whose edges all have the same length. Suppose the edge length for this cube is s. Then in terms of s, what's the volume of this cube? Right, the volume of this cube is s times another s times another s, because all these edges have a length of s. And another way to write s times s times s is like this, s raised to the third power which you can also read, appropriately enough, as s cubed. Let's try out a real-world example. Say you're moving to a new house, and you want to bring along your fish tank, which weighs 10 pounds when it's empty. And suppose the height of the tank is 10 inches, the length is 20 inches, and the depth is another 10 inches. But when you're about to move the tank, you look carefully, and you realize it's actually still full of water. 
Carrying around a 10-pound tank might be no problem for you, but if it's really heavy when it's full of water, you might not want to take the chance of injuring yourself. So when the tank is filled with water, how much do the tank and water weigh together? To figure this out, you'll want to know that one cubic inch of water weighs 0.036 pounds. And if you're not sure how to get started on this problem, click over here. Right, the volume of the tank is 2,000 cubic inches, which means the total weight of the water in the tank is 72 pounds. Add in the 10 pounds of the frame, and the entire weight of the tank and water is 82 pounds. So maybe you're better off emptying the fish tank before you try moving it. It may not seem like it, but large containers that are filled with water are usually really heavy, so be careful. And if those containers are boxes, remember that you can find their volumes by multiplying the lengths of their three dimensions. Here we'll come up with a formula for finding the volumes of different prisms. First, let's see if you remember how to find the volume of a rectangular prism like this one here. It has a height of 4, a length of 5, and a depth of 3. So what's its volume? If you're not sure, click down here to review. Great! Next, let's look at prisms that are not rectangular. Let's start off with this shape here. Suppose these grid lines on the shape are separated by a distance of 1. Then the area of this shape is 12, because it contains 12 unit squares. Next, let's suppose this shape with area 12 is the base of a prism, and the height of this prism is 1. So what's the volume of this prism? In other words, how many unit cubes does it contain? Don't worry, this is not a trick question. Right, there are 12 unit cubes here. Next, let's increase the height of this prism. And now, there are five layers of our original shape of unit cubes, all stacked on top of each other to form a prism with a height of five. So if each layer has 12 unit cubes, and there are five layers in this prism, then what's the volume of this prism? Exactly right. This prism has a volume of 60. You got this answer by counting the number of unit cubes in one layer of the prism, 12, which is also the area of this top face of the prism, and you multiplied 12 by 5, the prism's height, which is the number of layers of unit cubes in the prism. This approach works for all prisms. A prism's volume is always equal to the area of its base, which has the same area as the top face, times its height. Let's see another example. Here's a hexagonal prism, meaning it's a prism with a base that's a hexagon. Suppose this hexagon has an area of 20, and let's say the vertical height of this prism is 6. So what's the volume of this hexagonal prism? Nicely done. Now this formula of base times height even works when the base has a curved shape, like in a cylinder. A cylinder is basically a prism whose base is a circle. Suppose the height of this cylinder is h, and let's say the base has a radius of length r. Use this formula up here to find the volume of this cylinder. And if you're not sure where to get started, click down here. Nicely done. So the volume of a cylinder equals pi times its radius squared times its height. Let's try an example with some numbers. What's the volume of a cylinder with a radius of 2 and a height of 7? Great work! Let's try one last problem. Here's an empty swimming pool. The shallow end is over here, and the deep end is over here. If you look carefully at this pool, you can see it's actually a prism. This wall over here is the base of the prism, and let's say it has an area of 75 square meters and the width of this pool is the height of the prism. And suppose this pool is 8 meters wide. So how much water can this swimming pool hold? In other words, what's the pool's volume? 